In a previous video I said I should stop buying servers and I got these three machines in today. But I actually didn't buy them. I got this to, uh, to try out and they are quite interesting. And I got this uh, Super Micro for free. So I got this Sun Oracle T3-2 and this is a dual CPU uh, Spark 16 cores or 32 cores in total with DDR3 memory. So this is a quite powerful machine. And I got this IBM Power 730 which is also not running Intel CPUs. It's running IBM Power 7 CPUs, also two CPUs, maybe six core, maybe eight cores. It's full of memory, 64 gigabyte. Both have some expansion cards. So in a later video, I will make videos about these two systems. And I got them to try them out because a friend of mine is trading with servers. And these two came in like extras and they are a little bit harder to sell for him, so I can try them out. If I want to keep them, I can uh, buy them from them. Otherwise I can give them back. But both are really interesting because they are non-Intel systems. And I got this Super Micro, so let's put it on the workbench and tell more about it. So I got this Transtech server for free and here's a German phone number. So it's probably a German system builder. And actually it's a Super Micro chassis. And here on top it says my name because I got this from a friend and he sells used server hardware, mostly Socket 2011 and up and memory and stuff like that. So this Socket uh, 771 system is not what he sells and he had a stack of them and he uh, brought them away to a scrapper and I said to him, oh I like to have one of the chassis to play with. Because I have the ML350 uh, server with a similar architecture, but that system really sucks and I don't like it. And this is a 2U machine with 8 drive bays and 2 CPUs and I didn't open it yet because, uh, yeah, let's, let's open it. Because I want to see what's inside. It probably has two CPUs and some memory and there's a disk controller in. So I'm really curious what we find. So let's check out what we have, if this cover will come off. Yes, here it is. We have two CPUs installed, eight memory sticks, two gigabyte each. So we have a total of 16 gigabyte FB DIMMs. Here we have a SATA or SAS controller with two ports and the rest is connected to the onboard SATA here. An IDE uh, cable probably for the CD-ROM player. Three big fans here. I think uh, this is a pretty nice machine and I got some spare parts for it including an extra motherboard. So let's take a look on this motherboard what we have. This motherboard has uh, 12 sticks of 2 GB, so I have uh, a lot of memory for it, but I have 4 GB sticks to put on here. So probably I won't even use the 2 GB sticks. On this board we have two E5420s, 2 times 4 cores, 2.5 GHz, uh, 6 uh, SATA, 1 IDE and this is really ripped out of the case. We have two PCI-X slots, four PCI-E uh, slots, maybe eight times or four times, even a slot here, not sure why this is blue, maybe a special slot. Two Ethernet, VGA, COM, USB, PS2, pretty simple board, but still with a lot of expansion and a lot of memory support. The server is 2U and I don't have the other part of the rack kit. Here we have the redundant power supply, they are 700 watt each. We have 8 hot swappable drive bays for 3.5 inch hard drives and it supports SATA and SAS. Here we have a CD-ROM player, a COM port, a reset power button and so cute, it has a floppy drive and this system is from 2008. So this is probably one of the last servers that has a real floppy drive. That's so cute! Let's see if this system still works. Yeah, it makes noise. So the power supplies are both working. Oh, and 
Yeah, I hope you can still hear me and it's blowing out dust and it's beeping. So, not sure if it's working. Uh, yeah. Uh, the lower power supply is blowing a lot of air, but the upper one is not blowing that much air. So let's see if I remove it. Maybe this will be a really short video when the system is broken and, and just gonna scrap it. <laughs> uh, that would be not so nice. One power supply looks like it's working and the other one it's failing. Let's swap them over. Now the power supply that wasn't working is in. Let's see what happens when I push the power button. Oh no! It looks like we have a dead power supply. So he saved the wrong server and scrapped the good ones. <laughs> oh joy! Low. Let's see what happens when I put power on this one. Oh, it's turning on. And three were serial ATA RAID controller. That's this card. Intel Xeon 5420 2.5 GHz. At least the machine is working, but one power supply is broken. And it's quite annoying the beeping. So let's go into the BIOS. Two CPUs detected. Oh, this noise is really annoying. Uh, advanced. Uh, boot features. Okay, this is really, really annoying with the broken power supply. So, let's see if I remove the broken one, if the system still can run without all the beeping stuff. Otherwise, I really hate this machine. And I don't want to spend any money on it, because it's not really worth it to spend money on a machine this old. I hope the upper spot is like the primary spot. No beeping. That sounds uh, better without the uh, alarm noise. Well, the system is booting. Let's see if I can open the power supply. Oh, please do, do not remove. I opened the power supply and do not lick this because it was powered on. So it can be a little bit dangerous, but all the caps look okay. And I don't see any like burnt parts or a fuse or something. So yeah, not sure why this is not working. So maybe I can find another one. I did a quick check online and I saw they are asking 60 euros for a um, power supply like this. I don't think this machine is worth 60 euros. So yeah, I will probably just run it on one power supply if that runs fine. Because this is a server to play with and try things out and mess with. And not a serious production machine. The CD-ROM player is working. I boot the Ultimate Boot CD. So let's uh, do a MEM uh, test and see 8 CPUs found, so it's 2 quad cores, uh, 16 gig uh, memory. I think 16 gig memory is not enough. I want to have more than 16 gig. So what I can do, take the memory of the spare board and put in 32 gigabytes. That's quite nice for a machine like this, but I have more memory. Let's install 64 gigabytes of memory. I have 4 gigabyte FB DIMMs, uh, 16 uh, total in this bag. 
which perfectly fits in this machine. A big disadvantage of FB dims is the heat output. Yeah, they are already hot and this machine has much better cooling than the HP ML350, but still the memory modules are pretty hot, so don't burn your fingers while swapping them. Let's take out all the sticks and put some more memory in it. Samsung 2 gigabyte PC2 5300F and this is 4 gigabyte also PC2 uh, 5300F. So let's fill this baby up and it has 16 memory banks. This looks really insane. All the memory banks filled with a blue color. But don't forget the wind tunnel because these modules need to have a lot of cooling and probably this is an really good heater in the winter now with all the memory modules filled up so let's see if the machine will explode with this amount of memory sixty four gigabyte memory installed nice and i already mem tested it, all this memory in the ml350 so i'm sure this memory is fine but let's uh, have it run for a while to see if the motherboard and the CPUs all are uh, in uh, good shape. What I like about this case is it's a normal ATX board. So I can swap out the motherboard for another ATX board. And if the cooler fits into you and you have like low profile cards, you are perfectly fine to upgrade it even to like a modern system in it. Also the power supply has 24 pin, 4 and 8 pin, so you can easily uh, drive a modern motherboard. Uh, the cooling is pretty simple and effective, 8 cm fans. And here by the power supply you have extra Molex, floppy connectors, another Molex, so yeah, no SATA connectors I think. No, only Molex. But still it's easy to put a converter on. And here on top of the floppy drive, which is actually a module, you can uh, put an extra SSD with some Velcro. And both these modules can be taken out. So you can install additional hard drives or swap out the floppy drive for an extra hard drive for an SSD. So you have the eight hot swappable and two cold swappable uh, trays. So you can install uh, 10 3.5 inch hard drives in here. So that is pretty nice and also when you swap out the DVD uh, drive you can put an SSD in here or an SSD in here. So a um, uh, 10 disk ZFS array is possible in this uh, chassis. For storage I will go uh, basic hard drive, a 160 gigabyte Western Digital Blue. So let's put it in the hot swappable bay and I cut two additional extra racks so that is easy uh, to work with. Another thing what I want to uh, change is the PCI uh, SATA controller because it only has two ports and I have this PCI X64 bit card also low profile with four ports. The rest of the card is the same, only additional ports. So let's remove this card. And actually this is not a PCI uh, 4 card, but a PCI 1 times card. So yeah, it's just not the best performer. And both cards run the same chipsets. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, low profile PCI, I rather have high profile PCI, but then you have a different kind of style motherboard and then the cards will be like this uh, in a riser card and then you can't swap it out for a normal ATX board. So both have pros and cons and the card is stuck. 
why it doesn't want to go in. And the card is bent. Shit. <laughs> uh, is the motherboard not aligned or did I just put it in wrong? Yes, it is in. Let's give this server a uh, 3D video card and this is an NVIDIA 8400GS. Only there's one problem. It won't fit. Because this is PCIe 16 and this is PCIe 8 times. What we gonna do is we gonna take away this piece of plastic. And luckily I have a spare motherboard. Otherwise I won't uh, do this. Am I really doing this? <laughs> oh, this is scary. I'm pushing the pin away. Let's see if this will work. Uh oh, the slot uh, was breaking open. <laughs> oh no, it's moving to the side. <laughs> uh, let's hope this works. Oh, only one little piece came out. Kids, don't do this at home. This is a terrible idea. Uh, oh no, the slot is uh, being fucked up. Maybe the card will run at PCI one times if it won't really fit. Ah, ah it looks like it. Uh, the slot is doing this. <laughs> oh my god. Terrible things you do to your server. Oh no. What have I done? Oh no, there's a, a metal pin bent. This was a bad idea. So let's try to melt it with a soldering iron. Not the most healthy thing to do with your nose above the plastic. I don't think I have any warranty left on this motherboard. Let's see, will it fit? Not sure yet. It's getting there. And I'm really happy that I didn't do this with my Sun server. Because I want to have a video card in that one. But not with breaking open the slots. It looks like it fits now. Let's see if my modification has worked or that we get magic smoke. The fan is spinning. Not sure which video card is now the active video card. I connected both cables. Um, this is not correct. There's something. There's something wrong. It's running on this video card. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the system is trolling me. I didn't test this video card, so. Maybe it's a video card. So let's change this card to this card. This card I know that it is working, but you need to have the annoying uh, splitter cable. And this is, but I think it was an NVIDIA 7300. So nothing special, but at least more 3D support than the onboard ATI chip. Okay, I think this card is broken because this card is working. Yeah, this looks normal and sharp image. What would you install on this server? I think it's a pretty nice server and with 64 gigabytes of memory, we have a lot of memory and eight cores is pretty decent, but it uses a lot of power. So it's not a server to put on 24 hour a day, uh, but you can use this chassis as a storage server if you want, a virtualization server, uh, a mix of that. One thing that this CPU doesn't support is hardware pass-through. So we can't uh, run virtualization and then like an IBM 1015 to the hard drives and free NAS in a VM. That doesn't really work on this system, so there's a bit of a downside. But as a machine to run like a lot of VMs without hardware pass-through, this will uh, work fine for your home lab situation. And we can install extra expansion and 
really play with it. I think Linux will run really great on this system. Uh, Windows Server will uh, run fine. Uh, VMware I never tried myself, but maybe I will put VMware on this machine just to see how it works and get some experience with it. In general, I like this server. It gives a lot of possibilities, but it is old. It's worth uh, not much anymore. So you can pick up machines like this for like 50 euros with a lot of upgrades already in. If you buy this bare bone and gonna upgrade it, I don't think it's the, the best value for your money because uh, dual socket 1366 and socket 2011 is a way better investment if you want to have like a low budget but good server. So this is more just for fun and if you can get it for, for free or super cheap, it's a nice option, otherwise better get a newer system. Starting Windows. So there's something uh, on the hard drive. I think this is Windows 7. So let's see if the system will work on it. At least it is not Windows Vista like on my uh, Dual Socket 2011. And I'm curious if it sees 64 gigabytes of memory. Probably not. If it's a home edition, I think it goes up to 16 gigabytes or something like that. And also not sure if I have a login password for this uh, Windows, because I'm not sure where the hair drive came from. Okay, uh, this is not working because I don't have a password. But at least the hard drive uh, works in the system. The things I'm missing on this system is the power supply because it's broken and I don't have the rail kit with it. But I don't want to spend any money on this system. I asked for another power supply by the friend that uh, sells the hardware. And I have a link in the description to his uh, sales. So if you like to pick up old server hardware, also some newer server hardware, please check it out. He has pretty good deals, most times under the eBay prices. A nice detail about this motherboard is that it supports 8 GB FB DIMMs. So maybe if I can find some, I will upgrade this memory to 128 GB. That would be really nice. And if you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon or use my Amazon affiliated links. Thanks for watching.